first two round, three round potential in Scorton, Stewart, and Turner, yep. maybe even higher, maybe even top two round potential. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome into Tech Sags Rewind presented by Specs. I'm David Nuno. We had a fun show today. Carson, favorite part of the show? The go hour with Olin Buchanan. It's every time with this guy. Like, he's got such it's a crush. It's must see. You just, like, have this crush for Olin, which, you know, I, I get it. Wouldn't go that far, but. I mean, it's cool. You have a screensaver with Olin Buchanan on your MacBook, whatever you have. Uh, Nick, what was your favorite part of the show? I liked our discussion on uh, who has the most to prove in the uh, 2024 season which which teams which players which coaches we thought so yeah i enjoyed that i enjoyed that as well we also had adam rittenberg of espn he uh, was breaking down the breaking news with michigan um letter of allegations or whatever it's called the loa i think it is uh we took, broke that down sean Moore gonna get in trouble what's the future with that that and more it's the tech sags rewind number 15 tyreek chappelle best thing to come out of philadelphia since the declaration of independence I don't know. Isn't he from Philadelphia? I believe you were correct on that okay. one. He, he is. Um, I was so happy when he went into the portal. I was a little worried because I'm like, dude, he was one of the ones that we relied on in the secondary. And then we started adding guys. Then he decided to come back. And it just it brings depth to a position that needs to be better this year. And they know that. Uh, he, I remember the first time... I, I think it was his first start or his first extended action was against Arkansas in 21. I don't know if you remember. They were well, hadn't he been a starter since his first game as yeah. a freshman year? Was that maybe okay? But the first time I remember they were picking on him was right. in the Arkansas game. Uh -huh. Okay, as and, as anybody would. Yep, and they were going to him and go, and then he grew that season. And by the end of the year, you're like, this guy's a plus on the field because in the beginning, you're like, ah, freshman, like most freshmen are. It takes time. Well, he's their best corner, yep. right? And I think if my if my memory's right. Uh, haven't looked this up before. I think he's hit, in his career broke up 24 passes. That's not a small amount. No. Uh, even over three years. It's going to be his fourth year as a starter. I mean, how often do you see that anymore? You don't see that. Um, so, yeah, him coming back, especially when you're trying to bolster your cornerback situation, I think he'd be excellent as a uh, nickel corner. But, uh, you know, he's been Which you might there. see him in that. You in might, but, you know, they're going to put him in the best in the best position – where he's going to commit the most pro, uh, production out of him. They're showing from Mississippi State. I think he had a, where he had an interception this year. He had a great game that day. Yeah, um, yeah. I think having him back, uh, that's just one more reason to feel really good about the, the secondary. Adam, what about Texas A&M? When you think about them, the changes that they've made, uh, the talent that they have, what kind of year do you expect to see from them? Yeah, it's just such an interesting team because, you know, as you mentioned, there's talent. There's some talent that's left, but that may be addition by subtraction. And I think it's certainly – a coaching staff that I have uh, a lot of confidence in because of who's leading it. And I think that they're going to be able to get more out of this team, maybe not right away, but I think by the end of the season. And you know, Connor Wegman is, is really interesting. You know, obviously, when healthy, he was able to do some good things, but can he stay healthy? Uh, you know, who, who are their playmakers uh, around him? You know, how are they along the line of scrimmage? Notre Dame's good along the line of scrimmage. That hasn't been the reason that they, they don't win national championships. They, they are really good on the defensive line, and their offensive line is usually one of the best in the country. So how does A&M match up with a team like Notre Dame right away? How do they match up, obviously, with, the, with some of the uh, opponents that they'll face in the SEC down the line? But I think, you know, again, going forward, you know, having this type of personality as coach and, and, and maybe some discipline that have been lacking under the previous staff, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how much, how much progress A&M can make in year one. Adam, uh, last thing for you, this new world of college football where programs and universities are trying to find funds to pay for you know, this $20 million expense that's coming here in, in a year. Uh, I read that uh, you, you posted about Nebraska, Ohio State, Alabama are trying to boost NIL funds with having fans pay for these open practices. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I I don't know if that was me, but it, but it certainly was aware of, of what some of them were, were doing. And Ohio State, I think, started that last year, and um, it's almost like a training camp atmosphere uh, at, at Ohio State um, because they can have fans come out. And obviously, Nebraska is the same way. And you know, if you if, if you're going to charge five or ten bucks, and you're going to get twenty or thirty thousand people to watch a, a preseason practice, that's a, a smart way to boost revenue. At times, like you mentioned. Um, you know they they that they need to need to find additional revenue sources. So you know, having been at Ohio State practices that are open to the public, there are a lot of people that want to see the Buckeyes. Same with uh, Nebraska. I would assume there in College Station they would want 
that a lot of fans w- would show up uh, to watch the Aggies as well. So uh, the passion of college football fans can be harnessed in different ways, and uh, you know, charging a little bit of money for uh, for practice, even though it's practice, uh, might be a smart move. I look at that D line. If Shamar Stewart makes the jump I think he can make, and, and he was starting to towards the end of the last year, and that's usually when it happens, you see it coming. Yeah. Doesn't just not, but he was doing this at the end of last season. If he do, if he continues that makes that jump, I think you could have three guys with like first two round, three round potential in Scorton, Stewart, and Turner, yep. maybe even higher, maybe even top two round potential. Um, and then DJ Hicks certainly has that potential. He's just really young. This will be his first year to start and play a lot. Um, but just seeing him, what little I've seen of him already, DJ Hicks, I'm like, damn, he's explosive inside. He's he looks really good. Um, linebacker, I think they've got at least four that they feel really Hopefully. nice about. Yep. You know, I mean, you look out there and you see Sanford, obviously York. And then the Shields and Scooby Williams coming in and out of the portal. Like I think they've got a really nice looking athletic group, kind of at the core of that. And then, okay, what else you want? You want a, a change up on the edge? How about uh, you know Cassius Howell, who led the MAC in sacks last year? How about Malik Silla, who physically is on the very short list? He and Rylan Kennedy, short list of most impressive looking dudes you know, from last year to this year. Solomon Williams, you know, a highly ranked recruit coming. So they, they've got, like, that front seven's got, I think, I'm, like, sitting there going, where, where's the weakness? Yep. And then you look in that secondary, and with Tyreek Chappelle being a big part of it, you could go a ton of experience if you wanted. You could go Chappelle. You could go Chappelle, either Mays or Will Lee at corner and you could go at safety with with Bryce and and Trey Jones. Yeah. If you want to go the really experience and and uh at nickel, you can go Jaden Hill. That's a ton of, of experience, experience in yeah. five right there. But they've got to hold off guys like Eli, I mean Eli, Des Ricks, Terry Bussey, Dalton Brooks who looks like a freaking stud out there. He he and Ricks when they're just Lining up and even running around a little bit, you're going, golly, those guys are. It's different. Dalton Brooks, Des Ricks, Terry Bussey. Man, that's a different level like of, of range and athleticism. And then I think with Bryce, he's like the quarterback of that secondary. He's got like honey badger tendencies. To just Barber is an explosive, explosive weapon. He's a playmaker. He was showing that this spring, and I think it was a pretty devastating Injury, if you talk – like for people in, that really know the program, they're going, man, that guy was going to be a weapon this year. And, and I think the initial, just what we heard, kind of felt like, damn, that's a long-term thing. And not to say this hasn't been long-term because it's the entire off season, but he, uh, if he can come back soon, like he, I'm telling you, he's a weapon. And people would just look at, oh, we got transfers from – but a lot of power five schools, but that guy walked in here and on tape and then put it into practice on the field. He's, he's an explosive playmaker at receiver and just like he was at Troy. And I don't think people that are following it realize, I think they do now because you've heard Elko. Yeah. You can kind of tell even in his phrasing that he thought he was going to be a big part of it. So if they can get him back, say, I'm just talking – you know, at random here, but they can get him back, you know, in time for those late sep- – you know, for conference play Arkansas, outside of Florida. Florida. Well, outside of Florida. For conference play. Like, yeah, it'd be great to get him back for Florida, and, and they might. But, like, if that guy can be healthy for seven of your eight conference games, uh, it could – has game-changing potential for the offense because then it opens things up for everybody. All right, Nick. You want to have Blake tell the people what to do? I actually don't. Okay. I don't. really don't. Just to, uh, oh, he's upset. All right, you tell the people what to do then. Okay. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, watch all of our YouTube videos. Football content on the way. What about uh, Will Fain in the background? You want him to do it? Oh, it's his last day. Oh, it's his last day? Will, I wish I would have known.
That's you, right? That's Will Fain in the that back. That is that right. All right. Good. Oh, hey, Kay Nagley, always on camera, of course. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time.